Joe here, your reliability man, bridging the gap between best practices and the reality you live every day. And remember, all these are from my experiences three times as a plant manager, as a department manager, a global director of reliability, um, and as an engineer. Your lean driven reliability topic of the day is presentation mistakes by the reliability community. Lots of questions on this topic, uh, lots of dialogue on some, uh, in some chat rooms. So I wanted to address it here. Uh, I've got four common mistakes that, uh, uh, you know, people make in their presentations when they're trying to sell their ideas, get upper management to make a decision. Maybe it's around people, resources, capital improvements, some sort of change. So there are four common mistakes. Number one, only speaking of long-term positive results, ignoring the need for short-term success. You know, plant managers are beat on daily for month over month improvement. And, you know, when you don't present the short term benefits of your project, you know, if you present, hey, we invest this $500,000, you know, over the course of five years, it'll pay for itself. That means a little bit, uh, but you've got to try to bring some uh, successes in, in the first, I, I'll tell you, 30, 60, 90 days, what successes are in those uh, first uh, days of the project. Remember that your plant manager, she's getting 10 new ideas a day and they're trying to sift through these and most of them they have to say no to. So don't give them an excuse to not pick yours. You gotta connect the dots with short-term and long-term successes. Actually, this conversation reminds me of the power of AND, A-N-D. You know, back in the 90s, we had, uh, there was a huge debate about quality. Can you have quality and quantity at the same time? The Japanese came in the automotive market and had insane quality and the Americans kept talking about quantity. Uh, but what we've learned since is you can have both. So can you have short-term and long-term positive results? Bring those short-term ones to the table. Okay, that's number one. Number two, not having established credibility. You know, if you've got 15% wrench time, uh, you've got five engineers that are all in reactive mode. You got eight planners all working on week zero. That's the current week. And now you're asking for money for some new PDM tools or a new lube room. Folks, you got to use the resources you have to the maximum of their ability. Now, that's not saying you wait till you get the 60% wrench time before you ask for anything, but when you're at 15%, you know, you gotta show a pattern. Hey, we're at 20 this month, and then, you know, with six months, we're going to be at 30, 35, whatever. And you've divided up your engineering into one reliability engineer and four in reactive mode. You're using the resources you got to the maximum ability. You know, imagine if your brother uh, has a problem with impulsive purchases. Every time he gets two nickels together in his pocket, they want to spend it. If that brother comes to you and asks for $1,000, well, he's not using his resources efficiently and he'll probably squander the $1,000. So, you know, uh, you got to make sure you establish credibility before you ask for things. That's number two. Number three, not supporting data with overwhelming observation. Here's an example. Say you want to replace an automatic lubrication system on a drivetrain. Imagine, you know, it, it's uh, coupled with the mean time between failure data that you present and all your charts and graphs. Uh, you observed five PMs and saw the wear patterns and you talked to the mechanics five different times. You went to a sister plant with a similar design and they also had, you observed two PMs there, full eight hour PMs you watched and talked to their craft people and you went to a third plant with the new design that you're looking at going to, and you observed how it operates and their mean time between failure, and you talked to their craft people. How could a plant manager refuse that overwhelming observation that you brought to the table? It's, it's you know, too many times people hold up brochures from the manufacturer talking about their hopes and dreams and promises of a new design without supporting it with observation. So not supporting data with overwhelming observation. A guy named Pat told me uh, that to do three times the observation as I could possibly stand. Uh, and in worst case, if you do observation, you're gonna get better solutions that eliminate some waste and that they're more executable because you've worked with all the crafts and you see the problems firsthand. 
That was number three. Number four, ignoring historical bias. You know, ever have you ever heard the plant manager when you presented to them, they started telling a war story or from 20 years ago in their career. This tells you that they have bias working in their decision making. They have bias. Their history, their experiences, successes and failures of the past are influencing their decision making. So facts are not going to win the discussion. They're going to start the discussion. So how do you add observation uh, and experiences? I, I said observation. How do you add experiences to that plant manager to help them make those decisions. Imagine uh, shadowing a, a frontline supervisor if you're talking about reactive maintenance and you want to add a reliability engineer. So have that uh, plant manager shadow a uh, uh, frontline crew leader for two shifts, two consecutive shifts. Let them experience it. Hearing something in a conference room and living it on the shop floor, completely different things than they are experiences. You know, go into a piece of equipment that has a lot of downtime that needs to be reset by the electrician, you know, every few hours or every few days. Go and stand there for eight hours. See what happens. Good chance they're going to see all kinds of cool things that's going to influence their decision making. So those are the four things. Uh, only speaking in long term positive results, not having established credibility. Uh, not supporting data with overwhelming observation and ignoring the historical bias of your plant manager. So your lean driven reliability task from this uh, talk on your next sales pitch, add these four to the checklist, add these four. Death by PowerPoint is really just getting started. You know, more data typically will not bring home the deal and the positive, the affirmation add one of the add all four of these add one you're going to get bet what do you have to lose right uh begin your journey again this stuff is not that hard let me know how i can help send me an email i'll help you uh, through correspondence uh if i can help you uh be your guide uh, i've been there before and i i promise you i can sa shave uh, years off your deployment thank you